item 26, this includes a revision as indicated on the supplemental agenda. On item 27, this relates to and amends item 63. Also, Supervisor Barter would like her vote to be recorded as no. On item 28, Supervisor Mitchell requests that this item be held. Also, this includes a revision as indicated on the supplemental agenda. On item 29, Supervisor Mitchell requests that this item be held. On item 30, Supervisor Mitchell would like to revise her motion to remove Rosecrans Avenue and replace with Imperial Highway, also remove East Gardena and replace it with West, West Mount. On item 32, this includes a revision as indicated on the supplemental agenda. On item 37, this includes a revision as indicated on the supplemental agenda. On item 40, Supervisor Chill requests that this item be held. On page 31, administrative matters, items 45 through 82. On item 50, the Director of Health Services requests that this item be continued to July 26, 2022, as indicated on the posted agenda. On item 63, Supervisor Barger would like her vote to be recorded as no. On item 68, Supervisor Barger would like her vote to be recorded as no. On item 72, the Acting County Council requests that this item be referred back to the department. On page 53, this includes miscellaneous additions to the agenda, which were posted more than 72 hours in advance of the meeting, as indicated on the supplemental agenda. On item 80A, Supervisor Solis would like to amend this item to also instruct the Inspector General, the Executive Director of the Sheriff's Civilian Oversight Commission, and the Director of Public Health through the Substance Abuse Prevention Office to report back to the Board in addition to exploring other prevented efforts. On page 54, separate matter. On page 55, budget matter. On item 84, this item will be held for discussion. On page 56, special district agenda. This is the agenda for the Los Angeles County Development Authority. The requests for continuances and referred back through 1D are before you. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Kuehl, seconded by Supervisor Barger to approve these items. Such will be the order. On page 57, notices of closed session. That completes the reading of the agenda, Madam Chair. We'll now take public comments for all agenda items, excluding public hearing items 3 through 9. Again, public comments for all agenda items with the exception of public hearing items Three through nine. Executive officer, please read the call-in information that was also provided on the agenda and explain the speaking rules to those members of the public who are calling in to address the board. Thank you, Madam Chair. As indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comments should call 877-226-8163 and use participant code number 133 6503. To repeat, please call 877-226-8163 and use participant code number 133-6503. Do not call that number if you only want to listen to the meeting. To listen only, please call 877-873-8017 and follow the instructions. To members of the public calling in, when it's your turn to speak, please state your name and which agenda items you wish to speak on. We will allocate 90 minutes for public comment on all of the regular items, excluding public hearing items 3 through 9, which has a separate call-in number and will be heard beginning at approximately 11.15 a.m. For all of those regular agenda items, you will have one minute to speak on one agenda item or two minutes to speak on two or more agenda items. In addition, those who would like to address the board with general public comment will be provided one additional minute for a maximum total up to three minutes per speaker. We will continue to accept all written comments that come in during the meeting, which will become part of the record. When speaking on the regular agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you're not speaking on a topic, or if we cannot tell if you're speaking on an agenda item, you will get one warning from county council or the chair. If you do not immediately or clearly get on topic or if you stray off topic again, you will forfeit the rest of your time and the chair will move to the next speaker. Please note that if you're also listening to the board meeting on a computer or speaker phone, 
You will need to turn down the volume on those devices as soon as the moderator calls on you. If you do not turn down the volume, there will be an echo. Moderator, may we have the first speaker, please? Our first participant is Jessica Golson. Please state the letter or agenda items you're addressing today and what you address on general public comment. You may begin. Hi, this is Jessica Golson. I'm the Executive Director of USS. I'm speaking on item 13. I just want to say I support um, the motion to make April awareness um, of veterans with Parkinson's month. Thank you, Supervisor Hahn, for introducing this motion that will bring awareness to Parkinson's disease. We at US Vets thank you and thank you for recognizing the work that we do, that um, the Greater Los Angeles VA does, that the VA of Palm Beach does, and the Parkinson's Foundation. We really appreciate your support. Thank you. Our right, next participant is Emily Parker. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today, and we'll address some general public comment. You may begin. Hi there, my name is Emily Parker, and I'd like to speak on item 68 and general public comment. Good morning, supervisors. I'm speaking today on behalf of Shield the Bay and Reusable LA. We strongly support the reduction of waste of single use articles and expanded polystyrene product ordinance. Single-use plastic articles are detrimental to the health of our communities and our environment. This ordinance will reduce an enormous source of pollution by curbing plastic food or waste and banning expanded polystyrene. Data from Coastal Cleanup Month shows that plastic foodware is consistently in the top five items found on our beaches and in our waterways, but they become impossible to clean, wreak havoc on ecosystem health, and transfer toxins back onto our own plates. In addition to improving ecological conditions, this ordinance will also benefit our small businesses. Case studies show that switching to reusables is overwhelmingly successful. Saving restaurants upwards of $20,000 annually while also reducing waste and greenhouse gas emissions. Similar policies to this ordinance have already been passed in over 150 jurisdictions across the state, and many restaurants in LA are already putting these requirements into practice, and they're experiencing cost savings and customer satisfaction. This ordinance will set our food facilities up for long-term success by shifting away from harmful and costly disposable products and opting for reusable or compostable options instead. While we strongly support the adoption of today's ordinance, I'd like to also briefly direct the supervisors and staff to the comment letter submitted by the Reusable LA Coalition with recommendations to further improve this law down the road, and we urge you to take these recommendations into consideration for revisions. As a global leader in environmental protections and community health, it's time for LA to listen to its people and its small businesses instead of large corporations and associations. This ordinance is an essential step to reducing a major source of pollution, and we express our strong support on today's adoption. I'd like to thank the supervisors and all staff for their dedication to reducing plastic pollution and to protecting our community. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Yvette Alfredo. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address on general public comment. You may begin. Good morning, Yvette Alay for Lido's Policy Director at Dignity and Power Now, speaking on items 12, 88, 84, and general public comment. On item 12, the ATI Work Group Final Report and the CFCI body have provided clear recommendations and a proven roadmap for alternative crises response that does not involve law enforcement. An effective and holistic alternative crisis response approach must invest directly in community, must invest directly in mental health professionals and social workers, which are the most effective first responders in mental health crises. I urge the board to really invest in the MAP teams and alternative crisis response that does not involve law enforcement. On number I, and on 80A, when the board tries to tackle issues like drug detect, detection, it is important to keep in mind the county's commitment to care first still last. No problems can be solved by giving more funding to law enforcement, and no care first approach relies on cops or surveillance to solve a problem. What we need is a harm reduction services and education in jails. The board must take a care-oriented, supportive approach to drug use rather than a carceral and violent one. This is an issue of incarcerated people's health, not a criminal problem to address with discipline and surveillance. This motion should be replaced with a proposal that outlines harm reduction services for people dealing with substance use disorders while incarcerated. We need a drug response that prioritizes the well-being of incarcerated people, not one that gives more money and freedom to an already corrupt and abusive sheriff's department. On item number 84, the, the budget, 
you know, year after year, we take a look at the budget, and it's the same status quo budget, which several members of the board have named needs to be changed. The board has committed to a care first approach, but we're seeing both the sheriff and the probation department's budgets maintained year after year, while proven agencies within the county, like the Office of Diversion and Reentry, like the ATI initiative, which has been tasked with implementing the recommendations drafted by community and county as a partnership, continue to be underfunded comparatively. It is really important that we're investing in restorative care villages, as Supervisor Solis has championed, an alternative crisis response, in, in more bed capacity for the Office of Diversion and Reentry, and expanding public health, and expanding services within the Public Defender's Office, which is severely underfunded as well. I was very concerned to learn that it is a six-month waiting period for public defenders to receive any social work support or paralegal support. This is unacceptable. We are really committed as a county, not just the board, to reducing the population within our jails, to actually letting folks out with services, pretrial services within the JCOT. And yet we're not seeing the money follow the rhetoric or follow the policies and follow the care for vision that the county is supporting to support. The team is expired. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Eric Previn. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address some general public comment. Please begin. Mr. Previn, your line's open. You might be muted on your end. Check your mute, please. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Olivia Shields. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address on general public comment. You may begin. Olivia Shields, your line is open. Please begin. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please begin. Oh, hi, my name is Olivia Shields, Urban Peace Institute, Los Angeles Uprising Coalition, speaking on agenda items 184 and general public comment. Um, I want to reiterate some of what my colleague Yvette Ale said around um, fully funding youth justice reimagine and the Department of Youth Development. Last year, the board promised to fund youth justice reimagine at $75 million, um, and zero dollars have gone to community based organizations for new youth services. The board really needs to keep their promise and strongly and fully. Uh, robustly fund the Department of Youth Development. There's been countless hours um, by community that have gone into figuring out exactly what staffing um, is necessary to launch the Department of Youth Development successfully, as well as building up youth development networks um, for the, the future of youth in LA County. And we have yet to see the investment that is necessary for um, these all of these projects to be robustly funded. We need at least $95 million to launch CYD as well as to do the development networks um, and support yet students, critical messengers, peace builders, and reentry. Um, I also wanted to comment on the American Rescue Plan Act dollars that are necessary to uh, build up youth centers and youth housing, including building new 24-hour youth centers and using existing, existing spaces to maximize uh, resources. And we need all of this to be done through a third-party administrator to uh, get dollars to the ground directly and as soon as, as, soon as possible. Um, and especially in uh, areas of South LA and Antelope Valley, um, where the, the need is the highest for our young people. And I also want to uh, lastly say that we need to reduce juvenile probation budget. The budget is $570 million, and there are over 400 vacant positions and posted positions that can be cut, and those dollars can be reallocated toward the youth justice reimagine. It is about time that we take dollars away from law enforcement and the board maintains their commitment to care first and reallocates these dollars to do justice reimagine as they have said they would do in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Roy Humphreys. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address on general public comment. Uh, my name is Roy Humphreys, and I was on uh, 22, and I'm 52, 
and I'll probably just go to 52 first. You know, it's something that the County Board of Supervisors, uh, since time immemorial, haven't got the intestinal fortitude. And pe people, uh, you talk about underfunding. Where's the money? You're going to have to raise taxes or do some magic to get the money. It's a point of math. Just tell the common t the persons who are coming, do the math. And how would you going to divide it? And none, none of you have the intestinal fortitude come up and say, people, do the math. And what is the figure out of how are you going to divide it? And these people who want to defund uh, law enforcement, what don't you understand about the words law enforcement? And this is typical here in Roland Heights that we had with the... Uh, uh, the homeless, or actually transient scourge of the uh, persons at uh, Lamb's Auto and so forth. And the, the videos are on my YouTube channel. So the people want to uh, do the law enforcement uh, item 52 and, and defund them and so forth. Just uh, where is uh, the money? And the underfunding has gone on for decades. How do you cure decades and decades of underfunding? Uh, no money. Of course, we can always build another uh, million dollar dog park or a, a 2.5 million dollar uh, a, a skateboard uh, situation. And uh, not a general comment here. We have uh, Julian Garcia of uh, the uh, Public Works there put out a piece and I sent to uh, supervisor, actually sent to audience, put out on the uh, Roland Heights Advocate. A, a, absolutely grounds for termination to put out anything as far as the radar certs for the, it, it was just appalling that anybody would have the audacity uh, to put out a piece of garbage like that it's an insult to everybody and again grounds uh, for uh, termination and, and further uh, amplified at the uh, Roland Heights Community Coordinating Council by the CHP the time has expired thank you do we have the next question? Our next participant is Shihang Zetho. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and will you address on general public comment. We begin. Good morning. I'm going to address uh, item 13. Uh, my name is Chi Leo. I'm a veteran here living in Los Angeles. I wanted to thank Supervisor Hahn for introducing the motion that will bring awareness to veterans living with Parkinson's disease. Uh, in partnership with the Parkinson's Foundation, there are many great resources available for veterans at the Greater Los Angeles VA Medical Center as well as the Tabor Rubin VA Medical Center in Long Beach. I highly recommend that all veterans, families, and their caregivers reach out to the VA to find out what benefits and resources are available, uh, available and they are eligible for at the Veterans Affairs. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Valerie Guo. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address some general public Hello. comment. You may begin. Hello, Board of Supervisors. My name is Valerie, and I'm a student at USC. I will be speaking on item 80B in the supplemental agenda, supporting medical expansion to provide comprehensive health care for all. With the COVID pandemic, we have seen communities of color hit the hardest economically and health-wise due to historical redlining and environmental racism. Healthcare and its services are essential in times of such uncertainty to provide that sense of security and reassurance. It can also be used as part of a solution to combat some of these health disparities we see in Los Angeles. However, the current coverage of Medi-Cal is not comprehensive and not accessible to everyone, especially to undocumented immigrant communities and the unhoused community as well. According to the Cal Health Report, almost three quarters of low-income residents said that they had to cut off spending on other household items to pay for medical bills, and about six out of ten say they gutted their savings and had to borrow money from family or friends to pay their medical bills. Healthcare should be considered a human right, so there needs to be full free medical The time has expired. Maybe have the next speaker, please. Our next participant is Craig Cadwallader. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address on general public comment. You may begin. Good morning, honorable supervisors and staff. My name is Craig Cadwallader, and I'm speaking on behalf of Surfrider South Bay and Reusable LA, and I wish to address it, agenda item 68 and general public comments. 
Over 150 adopted foodware and plastic ordinances exist in the state of California, some of which have been in place for well over a decade. Almost all of these adopted ordinances include hardship waiver clauses to protect businesses. There are very few, if any, documented examples of hardship waivers having been requested by larger small businesses, and those that we are aware of have been resolved by the municipalities, resulting in waiver requests being withdrawn. The unfounded fears of severe business impacts have not been realized following implementation of similar ordinances across the state. This ordinance incorporates a business-friendly hardship waiver option should unique circumstances warrant a waiver of any part of the ordinance. And importantly, the single-use plastics ordinance compliance motion by Supervisors Hahn and Solis that was unanimous unanimously approved on April 5 represents an even stronger support for businesses in L.A. County. I strongly commend the Board of Supervisors for the smart and innovative actions and strongly urge our honorable supervisors to adopt these actions by L.A. County that represent one of the strongest pro-business and pro environment in the state of California to effectively address reduction of plastic waste. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Genevieve Clavero. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today, and we'll be able to have some public comment. You may begin. Yes, good morning. This is the doctor of Rosia Clavero. I will speak to 17, 20, 29, or 50. I have two, three, or four to 17. About that, AB 24 said, oh, we don't need to create another agency to go over LASA. Anyway, 28, strengthening the health care, I think that's really important to put LASA. And nobody's talking on the 20, Adam 29, about in allowing a restaurant to keep the space in the sidewalk. Do they go to have to pay more taxes? Are they going to be responsible for taking care of that sidewalk? You know, are, are they legally responsible for that? And 50, I cannot believe that you have postponed the report on the progress of, of health care. And I know that projects are not working well, that's a waste of our money at all. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? So, thank is Nicole Diomasa. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today, and whether you'll address some general public comment, you may begin. Um, I will be speaking on agenda, supplemental agenda item AEB. So as we know, COVID is on the decline as compared to the original Omicron surge in December, and with that, mask mandates have been lifted and people no longer need to show vaccination or a negative test at indoor concerts and sports events. For many, this is a cause of celebration, but for certain marginalized communities hit hardest by COVID, it's a sign of abandonment. This, it, disparities exist within both racial disparities and wealth income disparities. For every um, one, <laughs> every 100,000 unvaccinated residents out of each ethnic group, 74 Latino and 60 black people were hospitalized for COVID, versus 43 white and 30 Asian people. LA County has a duty to conduct con culturally competent and linguistically competent care for these disparately impacted communities. They also have worse access to healthcare and suffer from higher risk of chronic conditions due to city-built infrastructure and environmental justice needs to be um, taken to ensure greater access to health care. So, um, excuse me, the, the time has expired. Do we have the next speaker, please? Dr. Gary Edmont, please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today, and whether you'll address our general public comment, you may begin. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. I'm speaking on agenda item 28 and public, general public comment. I'm a psychiatrist at the women's jail in Linwood, and my colleagues and I treat many underserved women in L.A. that are 
are not only mothers and grandmothers, but often have additional responsibility of raising their own grandchildren. And I can't tell you what all the unintended consequences of COVID-19 will be, but as your first responders, my colleagues and I bring health equity directly to our patients. And in the jail, we have the most access to patients, which allows us to build relationships and educate our patients about the importance of screening of diseases such as colon cancer, for example, early screening, uh, homelessness, substance abuse, chronic mental illness, new laws that driving the demands for services. And in LA, we have many training and fellowship programs. However, we have significant staff shortages. To meet the demands of the future, we need improved benefits, not only to recruit, but also to retain our most seasoned staff. And we need your help to end the exodus of our best staff to help recruit the brightest rising stars to meet the demands that lie ahead. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Charles Kassler. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address on general public comment, you may begin. Hi, my name is Charlie and I'm a resident of District 3. I would like to speak on agenda uh, ADA and general public comment. Um, I oppose ADA because years of research, scientific research has shown that treatment in jails can change people's attitudes toward drug use, prevent relapse, and help transition incarcerated people back into their communities upon release. The most effective solution for drug use in jails is mental health treatment and medication, harm reduction services, and prioritizing the health and well-being of incarcerated people. And rather than spending huge sums of money to supplement LASD's budget, the board should invest in harm reduction services and addiction treatment in county jails. Until the root of the problem is addressed, LASD's attempts to detect drugs will never result in an actual solution. More drugs will keep coming in, more money will be spent by LASD to catch them, and the health of incarcerated people will continue to be neglected and devalued. The board must reframe this as a problem of health and safety, not of crime and punishment. And for general public comment, um, I'd like to strongly say that incarceration destroys mental health. The MCJ closure report found that it is more costly to incarcerate people with mental health conditions than it is to place them in community-based care. Important points from the, uh, from the report, the average daily cost of incarcerating people in mental health units in jail is $548, whereas the average daily cost of community-based housing and treatment for the same group is $207. Currently, there are over 5,600 people with mental health issues in L.A. County jails. Numerous county commissions and work groups have called for the BOS and CEO to fund thousands of new treatment beds. The MCJ closure report called for allocating $237 million to fund 3,600 mental health beds immediately so successful programs could scale up and support releases from jail. The board has heard this call to fund new treatment beds repeatedly. County work group after work group has made this need clear and plain, yet the board has refused to allocate the money. While the board drags its feet, vulnerable people are deteriorating in jail and coming home in worse conditions. Even the director of correctional health services. Your time has expired. Do we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Sean Hogue. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address some general public comment. You may begin. Good morning. My name is Sean Huff, and I'm from California for Safety and Justice, and I'm calling in support of item number 19. We'd like to support Supervisor Solis's motion to create a permanent family assistance program in L.A. County. It's important that all victims and survivors, including those who have been harmed by law enforcement, are able to access support, resources, and funds so greatly needed to help us grieve our loved ones. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Eric Preben. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you will address on general public comment. You may begin. Yes, I, I will address on general public comment and I will address several items. And I would like to look into why this has happened twice. It's very unsettling because as I'm preparing, I have to call back and get everyone to put me back in the queue. But that's unfortunate. Thank you on the budget, 84, item 84. This is a big budget, okay? It's enormous. It's $38 plus billion. Dollars. Um, and there's a lot of uh, things in there. Well, first of all, let's understand at a glance what's going on, okay? It's a $38.5 billion budget. There are 111,500 budgeted positions. 
Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Christopher IG. Please state the regular agenda items we will be addressing today and whether you'll address some general public comment. You may begin. Great. Okay. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. My name is Christopher Egan from the Union of American Physicians and Dentists, and I'll be addressing agenda items 28, investing in strengthening the, health, the county health care workforce and general comments. The Union of American Physicians and Dentists supports parts of the Alliance for Healthcare Integration Report and the motion, but there is uh, missing information about the two-tier system on the benefits package for doctors and dentists. So that affects the recruitment and retention of these classifications. Currently in Los Angeles County, unionized doctors and dentists hired are only allowed to participate in a benefits package that is 20% less than management in non-unionized doctors and dentists. So our members have had the highest vacancy rates out of almost all the classifications. The union has requested changes to this practice and have been denied citing past court decisions. The practice of having a management non-union benefit package at a 20% richer is a destabilizing force on or valuing frontline workers who see patients. Other healthcare systems do not do this just because doctors and dentists wanted to unionize. The union has had to go and get short-term disability for our members to pay out of pocket so our doctors and dentists and pharmacists can go on maternity and paternity leaves. Uh, so they will not have to go on unpaid leave and go for months without a paycheck. So the management benefits package provides short-term disability. If the county wants to retain doctors and dentists, pharmacists, and veterinarians, then they need to provide benefits that are not two-tiered. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is William Harrison. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you'll address on general public comment, you may begin. I'm addressing general public comment. I did a trend study regarding Roman Unified School District and Walnut Valley Unified School District. As a black man, I was more shocked when I looked at the lack of representation in both school districts. I'm a member, I'm sorry, I'm a resident of District 1. I brought this up to my representative, but for some reason, I have not been able to make contact with uh, my representative or her personnel. I leave messages, I don't get called back, but these numbers during my uh, study are absolutely shocking. I know that the county supervisors are concerned with the African-American population, and I feel it, that it's very necessary for someone of the supervisor capacity to see me so that uh, we can go over these numbers which are most, most shocking and uh, I, I'm, I'm disappointed that this is one has not contacted me. Thank you so much. Madam, Madam Chair, my name. This is my district. I'd like to have my staff follow up with you if you can give us your name first and last and uh, please feel free uh, to give us that information. We'll gladly look into your your question, and we'll work with the LA County Office of Education. They're really the oversight uh, agency that oversees our school districts. Thank you for your comments, sir. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Michelle King. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today, and whether you will address on general public comment, you may begin. Uh, good morning, this is Michelle King, and I'm a resident of District 1. Speaking on agenda items 12, 80A, 84, and public comment. Uh, I support okay, item again, 12. Thank you. I support item 12. Guns have no place in responding to a mental health crisis. Models of alternative crisis response have been put forward in the ETI report and in the Measure J Behavioral and Mental Health Subcommittee process. The recommendations of these bodies for mental health care, harm reduction, substance use treatment, and conflict intervention are a proven roadmap for an alternative crisis response that does not involve law enforcement. I oppose item 80A. In July of 2020, the board voted unanimously to increase transparency and accountability of LASD. In October of 2020, the board voted unanimously to remove LASD control from county parks. In November of 2020, the board voted to explore ways Sheriff Lee and Nueva could be removed from office. And in May of 2021, the board voted unanimously to protect surviving families from retaliation and harassment by the Sheriff's Department. 
you have consistently voted for sheriff oversight and accountability because you understand the dangers that LASD poses to our community. You understand that providing more funding and freedom to LASD is never an effective solution. Instead of supplementing LASD's budget, the board should invest in harm reduction services and addiction treatment in county jail. The board must reframe this as a problem of health and safety, not a crime and punishment. Item 84, LA County's budget is a reflection of the county's leadership. I'm disappointed to see that this year's proposed budget is once again a demonstration of overinvestment in the carceral system and underinvestment in care for our communities. I would like to see a reduction in the budget for sheriff and probation departments and an increase in the budgets for mental health care, public health, emergency management, and children and family services. I urge the board to adopt the reimagine LA County care first budget that elevates care first demands. Last, March 30th was the one year anniversary of the MCJ closure report, which gave the board what they said they needed, a detailed plan for how to close MCJ and invest in community infrastructure. Two years ago, another county work group published the Care First Jail Last Report, which gave more than 100 detailed recommendations and 26 immediate next steps. Closing MCJ is gender justice. It is racial justice. It is housing justice. Incarceration is deadly and destroys mental health. You have all the resources that you need. It is time the board commits to closing MCJ without a replacement by March of 2023 and set benchmarks for that closure. You must fund beds and track progress by allocating $237 million to create 3,600 mental health beds by March of 2023. And the board must establish and fully fund an independent pre-trial services agency in three to six months. Chair first, jail last. Thank you for your time. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Lee Chin. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you will address some general public comment. You may begin. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. My name is Leanne Chen. I am a psychiatrist in the Department of Mental Health, and I'm addressing item 28 and general comments. Um, I'm in favor of item 28, which will help strengthen our workforce. This would include helping to recruit and retain physicians, dentists, pharmacists, and veterinarians. Um, the reality is that doctors and medical professionals use the prime of their years in school and training, commonly accumulate student loan debt upwards of $300,000. Many put off starting a family or buying a home and start working on average in their mid-30s. Colleagues that I try to recruit to work for county, they believe in our mission and want to serve our community, but they cannot afford to do so for these reasons. And passing item 28 would help to make a positive difference to strengthen our workforce. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Mm -hmm. Our next participant is Lynn Percy. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you will address some general public comment. You may begin. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Supervisors and staff. I'm addressing item 28. My name is Lynn Kersey, and I'm the Executive Director of Maternal and Child Health Access in downtown Los Angeles. I'm proudly part of uh, Supervisor Hilda Solis' district for my work and Supervisor Holly Mitchell's district where I live. Um, I very, our organization, in fact, very much uh, supports investing, strengthening the county healthcare workforce. We refer and provide warm handoffs and handhold people into the county system for mental health services, health services, and all manner of social services, and the weights are untenable. Um, anything that would streamline having to, uh, the ability to access needed care is important, and maternal and child health access strongly supports this motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Monique Shaban. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you'll address she, them or public comment. She's the one who said that she's going to be there with our kids today. But she's not okay. Okay. And, and, and you are locked into the hearing though, right? Yes, yeah. we can hear it in the phone. Yeah, we'll hear it in the phone and we'll hear it on the phone. Excuse me. Can we have the next speaker, please? Because you did not talk in front of that. Our next participant is Peggy Kennedy. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address the general public comment. You may begin. My name is Peggy Lee Kennedy with the Bennett Justice Committee, and I'm speaking in favor of agenda item 12 and on public comment. First, um, I want to, I don't want to repeat.
repeat what other people have said about um, item 12, but I'd like to caution the county in uh, not hiring a sub uh, type of police in uh, masquerading as a mental health outreach, like the LA City has been doing with urban alchemy. Um, you know, it's that is ridiculous. But I support not having police. It's very important that we take law enforcement out of the response to mental illness on the street. And also for my general public comment, I want to say that it's completely insane that we still have 5,600 people living with mental health issues in LA County Jail. God help you or your family if someone you care about is languishing there on an assessment hole. I mean, we've had working groups uh, that called for the Board of Supervisors and the CEO to fund thousands of new treatment beds. Why haven't we done it? These are lives that are suffering, people that are suffering are human beings, and we need to deal with that immediately. The money that uh, the Men's Central Jail closure report called for needs to go right now to developing programs for people so they can be released out of jail. Mental illness is not should not be a crime. And at some point, before I die, I'm a senior citizen. I'd really like to see L.A. County Jail not be the largest mental health facility in this country. Please, act now. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Now, ladies and gentlemen, to address the board, if you have not already done so, please press one, then zero, press one zero a second time, or you will be removed from the queue. Thank you. We will now hear the Spanish interpretation of this reminder. Damas y caballeros, como recordatorio para dirigirse a las supervisoras, si aún no lo ha hecho, presione uno y luego cero. En este momento. No presione uno y cero por segunda vez o será eliminada de la fila. Gracias. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Dr. Portia Turner. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you will address on general public comment. You may begin. Thank you. I'm addressing agenda item 28, investing and strengthening in the county health care workforce. Good morning. I'm Dr. Portia Turner Dennis, who's been with the County of uh, Los Angeles for 13 years. I work for Harvard UCLA Medical Center, a level one trauma center, and Martin Luther King outpatient. We specialize in hospital based dentistry, in which we do very, very difficult procedures for patients that need extra care, such as hospitalizations, and then they're taken to the operating room for their treatments to be cleared for different procedures, such as heart and, and kidney. We also train dental residents. These facilities are both and supervisor of Holly Mitchell's district. Our team consists of specialists that serve a very, very large demographic community, not just the MLK, Harbor, UCLA facilities. Other physicians and dentists, mainly a lot of contract clinics and private, refer to us from outside district because they cannot handle the specialized care that is needed for their patients. These patients come from El Monte, Long Beach, Mid Valley, Antelope Valley, and county facilities. Um, the, the, the issue basically is that uh, we are basically such specialization that they have to refer to us. Uh, and we need more dentists for retention. The time has expired. Maybe have the next speaker, please. Our next participant is Gloria Gonzalez. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and we will address the general public comment. We begin. Gloria Gonzalez, your line is open. Please check your new button on your side. Yes, can you hear me? We can hear yes, you. Yes, please begin. Yes, hi, my name is Gloria Gonzalez with the Youth Justice Coalition and the Los Angeles Youth Advising Coalition. I will be speaking on item one, a reform of the comments. So I really, really want to recognize that there are also other people on this call that have stated this and just reiterating what has been said and really hoping that the Chief Executive Office and the Board of Supervisors will finally listen to what young people across the county have been demanding. 
The American Rescue Plan provides $1.9 million billion in funding to LA County to build an equitable economic recovery from the devastating economic effects. And what we see is that from that $1.9 billion, only $1.5 million were focused on system impacted and formerly incarcerated young people. This fund can be used to support the integration and launch of the Department of Youth Development in July 1st. And it can also be focused on creating youth centers across the county, which will be a high need. We also urge and demand the Board of Supervisors to at least fund the Department of Youth Development at $95 million to fully launch this department that for decades and for 100 years has not happened. And so what we see is young people over and over stuck in the carceral state and the carceral system without access to services and resources that will support them and see them through a human lens and not through another number or county um, prison number or funding, but in a way where young people can explore themselves, their communities, and uplift who they are and be proud of where they come from. $55 million for youth development network for four different spas. With greater investment in Spa 1, the Antelope Valley, and Spa 6, South Central Los Angeles. To support, again, the young people that have for decades been forgotten about and where you see where the highest need has been, they've been given to probation and where you see with Barry J, where probation is not able to meet the standards, not even the most basic human needs that young people need. And so we need credible messengers, guest teams, peace builders, CBOs that are already working with young people to also be able to go inside. And we also need the Probation Oversight Commission to have and to push for probation. Excuse me, not only. The time has expired. May we have the next speaker, please? Thank you. Our next participant is Marcel Rodarte. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you will address on general public comment when you begin. Hi, good morning, uh, Madam Chair and Board of Supervisors. My name is Marcel Rodardi. I'll speak on item 13 today. I'm the Executive Director of the California Contract Cities Association and retired Air Force veteran. I want to thank you, Supervisor Hahn, for introducing this uh, motion today and bringing awareness to Parkinson's disease, the work of the VA Greater, of Greater Los Angeles, VA of Long Beach, and organizations like Parkinson's Foundation. Your dedication to our veterans is appreciated by me and all of our veterans throughout Los Angeles County. Thanks for all you do to support our veterans, and thank you to the rest of the Board of Supervisors for supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant yes. is Holly Schaefer. Please take the regular agenda items you're addressing today, and whether you'll address some general public comment, you may begin. Hi, my name is Holly Schaefer. I will be speaking on my opposition to agenda item ADA. The issue of illegal drug use stems from a startling rate of those living with substance use disorder and mental health issues in the Los Angeles jail system. Nearly a third of all inmates in the Los Angeles jail system have a mental illness according to 2020 statistics. And because these individuals lack treatment, the Bureau of Justice Statistics finds that these untreated problems in conjunction with the inflow of illegal substances in jails has led to a 200% increase in overdose deaths in county prisons. If we, want to create, if we want to create a solution to stop this issue for good, we must pair it with clinically proven measures that offer support through individual counseling and group therapy. To try to mediate the drug flow does not equate to a system of substance abuse disorder. It just sweeps the issue under the rug with no long-term prevention. I urge the board to implement more restorative systems. This will address immediate substance abuse disorder and it will create a long-term safety net to prevent those with difficulties from ending up in the system again. Because until these issues are solved, ADA is just a band-aid for me. a much larger issue. Time has expired. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Alan Waloveski. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you will address some general public comment when we begin. Hi, just confirming for Allison Waloveski. Yes, your line is open. Go ahead, please. 
Thank you. Uh, my name is Alison Walaszewski. I'm the Policy and Outreach Manager with the Five Gyres Institute, and I would like to speak on general public comments and in support of ID 68. Um, firstly, I would like to thank the Board of Supervisors on behalf of the Reusable LA Coalition and the thousands of community members who sent in over 11,000 emails directly to supervisors' offices and have submitted over 250 comments in support of the reduction of waste from single-use articles and expanded polystyrene products ordinance. And here's why. It's crucial that we think about single-use plastic pollution at its source. Throughout the whole life cycle of plastics, human health is severely jeopardized. Plastics leach harmful toxins into our food and bodies, are known to be endocrine disruptors, cause birth defects, and shock and shockingly, um, new scientific studies have recently found the presence of nanoplastics in human placenta and microplastics deep within human lungs. The toxic chemical styrene, commonly found in takeout containers, leaches out of plastic foam footwear containers and beverage containers and poisons consumers unknowingly. We must listen to science and phase out single-use plastics altogether. Reusable foodware and reuse systems continue to be the safest and most responsible choice for our communities and environment. And on behalf of the Reusable LA Coalition, we would like to express our gratitude to the county, the Board of Supervisors, the staff, the Office of Sustainability for really taking the first step towards reducing plastic pollution um, exposure within the county by uh, passing, or hopefully, fingers crossed, passing the, um, the ordinance today. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Anthony Robles. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you will address on general public comment. You may begin. Hello, my name is Anthony Robles. I'm with the Youth Justice Coalition and the LA Youth Uprising Coalition, and I'm here to um, speak on agenda items 1, 84, and public, general public comment. Um, so I've spent hundreds, if not thousands, of hours co-designing the Department of Youth Development through the Youth Justice Work Group in 2020, and currently the Youth Justice Advisory Group, and with community, the community of LA County Youth for the past you know, five or six years. Um, so I commend the board for getting this far in the process with us regarding the Department of Youth Development. The Youth Justice Coalition has been struggling in the streets and boardrooms to implement a Department of Youth Development for two decades. Um, so it's surreal that we're finally here. And so my comments are grounded in appreciation and gratefulness. Um, but our work isn't done. Having a Department of Youth Development on paper means nothing if we don't have the funding and resources to implement a successful launch with the foundation for a robust Department of Youth Development infrastructure that supports community-based youth development networks and services. We live in a county with the largest population of youth in the country, one of the highest rates of poverty in the country, and the largest juvenile carceral system in the entire country, if not the world. Juvenile probation receives over half a billion dollars to incarcerate a few hundred youth and supervise a few more who do not receive any, any adequate support to accomplish their educational and career goals. We have no coordinated youth development infrastructure or system that is geared to drive the social factors that lead to a healing environment for youth to thrive in our county. Juvenile probation is our youth juvenile probation is our only youth system, and juvenile probation has repeatedly failed to keep young people safe. We need at least $95 million in phase one of the, youth, the Department of Youth Development to effectively launch a department that can coordinate a decentralized and localized countywide development infrastructure, starting with four spas, a youth development network. The board promised $75 million for YJR a year and a half ago, but zero dollars have gone to community-based organizations for youth services, for new youth services. So 55, we need $55 million for youth development networks, or four spas, with greater investments in spa one, which is Antelope Valley, and spa six, which is South Central, to support the youth in greatest need. We also need $25 million to staff the Department of Youth Development. We need robust staffing to make sure we can launch and scale effectively. And we need $15 million to yet, for YES Team, um, and Peace Builders and Reentry. Um, and to support this CFA's budget, we need to reduce juvenile probation's $570 million budget to fund this part of Youth Justice Reimagine. We must cut all 400 vacant and frozen positions from the juvenile probation budget um, that they don't need and obviously can't fill. So, board, please keep your promise 
we need a strong and comprehensively funded Department of Youth Development. We've made it this far, and it's not time to settle or fall back now. Our job has been done. So a successful... Excuse me. The time has expired. Can we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Maureen McCullough. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you'll address some general public comment. We begin. Good morning. My name is Dr. Maureen McCullough, and I'm speaking in support for Agenda Item 28 for investing and strengthening the county health care workforce and the general public comment. I'm an emergency medicine physician at all of the UCLA Medical Center, and I represent all county physicians and dentists, but especially the frontline providers who battled COVID for the last two years. You know, we went into medicine not thinking it would be dangerous, and yet every day we came to work literally putting our lives on the line. We lacked supplies and staff. We watched as colleagues got sick. We were afraid, even cried, and yet we continued to come to work to save our patients' lives. We worked side by side with county colleagues with varying benefits and retirement packages. We worked with management to have the very best benefits package and retirement packages. Varying benefits and retirement packages are demoralizing. There cannot be two tiers of benefits in retirement. The county has a crisis in its ability to recruit and retain physicians and dentists. An enhanced benefits package, short-term disability, so for example, female physicians can take a paid maternity leave and a 401k to offset PEPRA must be returned to physicians and dentists of the county. In December 2012, William Ujioka, the Los Angeles County CEO at the time, sent a letter to the Board of Supervisors about PEPRA and the difficulty that would result in the ability to compete for, recruit, and retain professionals. We have seen that happen with our high vacancy rates. By improving the benefits package to physicians and dentists within the county, you correct that inequity and help offset PEPRA. You will enhance the county's ability to recruit and retain the very best professionals. You will ensure that the county is able to offer timely and quality medical care to the residents of Los, Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Jamie Cusick. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today, whether you will address some general public comment. You may begin. Hi, my name is Jamie Cusick. I'm speaking in opposition of 84 and a general public comment. The probation department's allocated budget slightly decreased from 2021 to 22 at 1.03 billion to 2022-23 at 1.02 billion. Over 90 percent of LESD expenses and over 80 percent of probation expenses go towards personal salary, personnel salaries and benefits. It's time for LA to implement a just transition away from a carceral system. Thousands of individuals rely on an income generated by carceral systems in LA County. The county must pursue and properly fund efforts to transition these individuals into employment that addresses gaps in health and human services as well as growing emergency response needs due to climate change and COVID. By meaningful investment in a just transition, LA County will be protecting its own workforce while addressing the intersecting crisis of mass incarceration, climate change, COVID, and racial inequity that affect every citizen. The county needs a just transition away from investment in incarceration and towards investment in careers in healthcare, harm reduction, education, and emergency management. Roadmaps for a just transition have been created by visionary indigenous community groups, environmental justice advocates, and advocates for the ending of criminalization. We must embody the principles of moving from an extractive economy based on punishment and criminal criminalization to a care-based economy based on investing in our most vulnerable, as well as investing in the retraining of those who have previously been trained to uphold systems of violence and harm. When we provide opportunities for meaningful employment that upholds justice principles and practices to those who have previously been trained into career paths that uphold punishment and violence, we improve the mental health and sustainability of all our community members. And in general comment, I'd like to make a note about housing justice. To stop the cycle of incarceration, many people need housing to stabilize after release and for the long term. Housing is safety. The county keeps looking for shortcuts and imaginary quick fixes to the housing crisis. Excuse me. Broader housing access. The time has expired. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Anthony Arias. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you will address some general public comment. You may begin. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Please go ahead. All right. I'd like to speak on agenda item 1280A. Um, 84 and general public comment. 
So for 12, I support Governor Newsom's Medi-Cal community-based mobile crisis services budget proposal. Um, I believe that law enforcement should never be involved in responding to a mental health crisis. It's critical that armed law enforcement are prohibited from responding to a mental health crisis. Remove police from answering social and health crises where they are not involved. Public uh, police response to crisis often cause more harm than good. This funding should be moved in community support model for alternative crisis response that addresses the needs of our mental health crisis, housing shortage, and broken economic system. In terms of ADA, um, all I have to say and reiterate is that when the board tries to tackle issues like drug detection, it's important to keep in mind the county's commitment to care for jails last. No problems can be solved by giving more money to law enforcement and no care first approach, which the county committed to, relies on costs nor surveillance to solve a problem. Um, for agenda item 84, the fiscal year 2023, the 2022-2023 recommended budget, the CARE First budget prioritizes investments in health, public assistance, housing, mental health, uh, mental health crisis and intervention, sustaining a COVID-19 response, and specifically deprioritizing and divest from carceral systems. We cannot invest in a status quo. Continuing to bolster a public safety budget of $9.1 billion that criminalizes our communities. And finally, for uh, general public comment, um, sorry, give me one second. For general public comment, all I have to say is that people power and the time is now. March 30th, 2022 marks the one year anniversary of Men's Central Jail Closure Report. Right now is the moment to bring attention to the Board of Supervisors' accountability to the people power that got us to these historical wins. Hundreds of people showed up to the Board of Supervisors, tens of thousands of letters and testimonies. People and communities whose live experience could tell the Board loud and clear what all of us here know so well. This jail needs to close now, and we need real investment and care support in our communities. The people power is what made clear that we need care for jails last. The, tr the board has no other choice but to do the right thing. Um, the board canceled the jail contract in 2019, and then a year later in 2020, we pushed them to commit to closing Men's Central Jail without a new jail. Um, Excuse me. Your time has expired. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is J. Stephen Brantley. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you will address some general public comment. <laughs> My name is J. Stephen Brantley and I'm a resident of District 5. I'm speaking on items 80A, 84, and making general public comment. First, on item 84, regarding the 2022-23 budget, I want to urge the full funding of the Care First Community Investment Programming by allocating at least 900 million from the county budget as demanded by LA County voters. We must fund the Care First budget by allocating at least 2.017 billion in year one from leveraging dollars from CSDI and other local, state, and federal resources. And we must fund the Department of Youth Development and Area CBOs through youth development networks as part of Youth Justice Reimagined by shifting $75 million out of probation. There's the math. Second, I want to voice my strong opposition to item ADA, which I suspect may have been introduced in response to last week's overdoses at Men's Central Jail, an incident that should serve to illustrate exactly why granting the LASD more funding and fewer restraints is not an effective solution to the issue of drug use in our jails. Substance use and addiction have been heavily criminalized for decades to the point that up to 65% of incarcerated people suffer from substance use disorders. I was one of them, and I can tell you that a violent carceral response will only exacerbate the problem. The only appropriate and effective response to this crisis is treatment and services that center harm reduction in order to ensure that people can safely recover in supportive community. Merely hunting down and removing drugs from jail even if that were possible, will not change the fact that thousands of incarcerated Angelinos are suffering from an illness for which they are actively being denied treatment. 
Rather than further supplementing LASD's budget yet again, the board should invest in harm, harm reduction services and treatment in county jails now and look toward replacing at least some of these facilities with community-based programming in the near future. Until root causes are addressed, drugs will just keep coming in, more tax dollars will be wasted, and incarcerated people will suffer and die. We have a responsibility to the safety of those inside and to securing justice and accountability for and to their family and community members, which is why I must again remind the board of its commitment to close Men's Central Jail and to move forward with recommendations for alternatives to incarceration that would address the root causes of criminalized behavior. Last week's overdoses might not have happened at all if those involved had access to supportive services, including harm reduction, safe consumption, counseling, and education instead of being locked inside that deadly place. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Natalie Greenberg. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you will also address some general public comment. You may begin. Natalie, Natalie, you might be muted. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Benjamin Adams. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today, and whether you'll address some general public comment when we begin. Good morning. I will be addressing uh, agenda number uh, 39 and a public comment. <coughs> um, the current housing crisis, it, uh, major factors that go into uh, it are the uh, purchase of the massive gobbling up of purchasable homes by speculators and investors. Rather than cudgeling them, um, with with that agenda item, I implore the board to please enact uh, use tax policy to shape their behavior so that millennials and Gen Z um, are able to purchase homes and build generational wealth. Vacancy taxes and sales taxes on properties that can be uh, that are used for investment purposes are effective policies which can be used by the board to help aid the housing crisis. For the comment, um, right now the subvariants BA2, BA4, BA5, and XC are coming to the U.S. They pose a serious threat to immunocompromised individuals such as myself, and I implore the board to enact policies akin to those nations who have better handled the COVID crisis in the U.S. Please look to these better examples when you when enacting COVID policies, so that you so that you may responsibly protect lives such as myself, my own. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder to address the board, if you have not already done so, please press one then zero at this time. Do not press one then zero a second time or you will be removed from the queue. Thank you. We will now hear the Spanish interpretation of this reminder. Damas y caballeros, como recordatorio para dirigirse a los supervisores si aún no lo han hecho, presione uno y luego el cero en este momento. No presione uno y cero por segunda vez o será eliminado de la fila. Gracias. Thank you. May we have the next speaker please? Our next participant is Julie Martinez. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you will address on general public comment. You may begin. Uh, uh, thank you. I will be addressing the items number 14, 16, 19, 21, 25, and 27. And um, thank you to the Board of Supervisors. I'm um, very proud to be an LA County resident for the great work that you do. In terms of item 19, I'm in support of uh, permanent funding for the implementation of the Family Assistance Program. 
As we know, families impacted by shared violence suffer undue trauma. And as the Board of Supervisors has been aware that the trauma continues because many families that have been targeted by the Sheriff's Department who have been victimized in, in terms of violence and or police uh, sheriff shooting continue to be harassed while they are speaking out against a sheriff over, overreach and sheriff violence. And in terms of uh, item 21, I am for uh, the plan for care first. In terms of um, item 27, um, thank you for passing, um, or hopefully you'll pass this to address youth houselessness. And in terms of general comment, I am asking the Board of Supervisors to please consider putting a charter amendment on the ballot. I know it's not easy. The sheriff is up for re-election. Re However, the state law not only allows to expect county charters, like the one in LA that was proposed to have a removal procedure for sheriff. We are not asking for anything radical. We're just asking for common sense checks and balances it's a structure that we currently do not have. If we do not pass a charter amendment that does allow for impeachment of the sheriff, the, the continuation of sheriff violence will continue in our community. Again, please, as, as you are our elected body, please, Alley County Board of Supervisors, please place a charter amendment on the ballot, which would create such an impeachment process. As we know, Sheriff Ian Weva has resisted all Excuse those me. No, 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 and good morning, Honorable Supervisors. Thank you for this opportunity to comment. I'm the President of the Silver Lake Chamber of Commerce. For the past two years, I've been working to help small restaurants, not just chamber members, but all over the Northeast LA area, including Pasadena. They've had a tough time, and we should do anything we can to help. The cost of single-use plastic and polystyrene foodware has skyrocketed due to supply chain issues and rising oil prices. During the pandemic, many restaurants switched to expensive disposables, greatly increasing their overhead. The cost of moving to reusable and or compostables is negligible. Studies are actually showing savings and there are also programs available to help make the switch. There's even a hardship clause in case they need more time, which is a buffer for the smallest, often immigrant owned ones. You've heard that passing this will harm restaurant owners, which I find curious. I talked to the mom and pop operators, that's who I represent. The majority I've spoken with are not just fine with eliminating plastics, they're in favor. Some have submitted comments and support. Many are already transitioning and are using that to market themselves because we all know that customers overwhelmingly want to move away from plastic. Lastly, many have children. They care deeply what they leave for them. Their restaurant is the legacy they're working so hard for, not a planet full of plastic. This is happening, we all know. Waiting longer doesn't make sense for anyone, including small business owners. I hope that you'll stand on the right side of history and pass this. Thank you so much for your time and leadership on this important issue. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Charles Cross. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today and whether you'll address some general public comment. You may begin. Hi, my name is Charles Cross and I've been an LA County resident for the last 12 years and I'm calling in support of agenda item number seven. Uh, I support the 33 unit townhome uh, community that will greatly improve the character of the neighborhood. Uh, the community will beautify the local neighborhood with new landscaping and attractive two story homes. Uh, this is part of Hacienda Heights and LA County desperately needs more housing and the project is an attractive project for landscaping on Tetley Street and blends with the neighborhood. Uh, Los Angeles is in dire need of new housing and I just wanted to call to publicly support um, uh, this townhome and uh, say that uh, uh, we are desperately in need of new housing. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? 
Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder to address the board, if you have not already done so, please press 1 and then 0 at this time. Do not press 1, 0 a second time, or you will be removed from the key. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Mm -hmm. Our next participant is Alex Bloom. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you will address some general public comment. Right now. Yeah. Hi, my name is Alex Bloom. I'm a resident of District 2 and I'll be addressing item 84, the budget, and uh, general public comment. I am about to marry uh, my who is a lifelong LA resident and we plan to live here, but we live a few blocks from where a police officer killed a, a young girl in a Burlington coat factory. So that is a major concern we face as we try to start our family in Los Angeles, uh, particularly facing this year's budget and alarming reinvestment in the corrupt uh, and gang-built sheriff's department. The Sheriff's Department allocated budget is supposed to, according to this budget, remain steady from 2021 22 to 22 23. Um, but Los Angeles has committed to being a care first county. This vision cannot be realized if we do not immediately divest from police based incarceration and reinvest into community based care and support services. LASD continues to be one of the largest funded departments in the county, spending billions of dollars to disrupt communities and incarcerate LA residents. We cannot achieve a care-first reality until the board actively invests in a care-based system rather than continuing to replace LASD budget. New LASD hiring has been approved despite a drop in the jail population. Why? The proposed sheriff's department budget is larger than budgets for mental health, public health, children and family services, the fire department, workforce development, aging, and community services. How do these breakdown and comparisons demonstrate a commitment to care first. The probation department's allocated budget slightly decreased uh, from 1.02 billion to 1.02 billion, um, and over 90% of LASD expenses and over 80% of probation expenses go toward personnel salaries and benefits. We are leaving ourselves dry to pay our own murderers in this county, uh, and it is extremely alarming. Uh, that the county is not spending more of this money to heal and treat our, our residents to build a stronger community where we take care of one another. The county needs a just transition away from over incarceration. The time has expired. May we have the next speaker, please? Mm -hmm. Our next participant is Sir James Bailey. Please state the regular agenda items you are addressing today and whether you will address some general public comment. You may begin. Mr. Bailey, your line's open. You may be muted. Check your new button, please. You're right. Thank you. My name is Sir James Bailey, Humanities Facilitator for Youth Bill Charter Schools of California, Youth Justice Coalition. I'm here for uh, item 1 and 84 to remind our Board of Supervisors of their promise to uh, reinvest, to redirect much needed funding to mental health, youth development. There's uh, 95 million that's necessary for the development of the um, youth development department. Um, we, we all, you've you heard it, the Community Care, Community First Cares Act. Um, we, we need the funding to make sure that, that we can um, supply resources for community action teams, 911 from Long Beach to uh, Canoga. We, we need more compassion and um, commitment to our community. And that's, that's where we, we are, we're right on the verge and we know that you can do it. So I'm calling in to say, please, um, we can't get well in a cell. We, we, it's a community first agenda that, that we're on. Um, and thank you, there's a lot of gardens being grown right now in Los Angeles, growing food. Um, and we want to continue to, to drop the, the seed of encouragement into individuals 
with uh, dementia, with addiction. We know that it's, co it's connection that heals. So let's make space, like uh, closing down Kenyan, uh, the, the Kenyan uh, detention center and creating Chucos. We can do that all over this, this county, um, and it's necessary, it's, it's, it's worthy. Other states are watching, and they're, they're seeing how impactful love and care can be, how support and healing and social justice and consciousness can be a part of curriculums, can be a part of church sermons, can be a part of uh, political agendas. So come on, we're all in here, we're all in it together. We are one, yes, y'all. We can do this. My name is Sir James Bailey. And again, thank you for allowing me to share the comment. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? As a reminder to address the board, if you have not already done so, please press one then zero at this time. Do not press one zero a second time, or you will be removed from the queue. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Our next participant is Donald Harlan. Please state the regular agenda items you're addressing today, and whether you'll address some general public comment. You may begin. Hello, my name is Donald Harlan. Uh, I'd like to speak on agenda items number four, five, seven, eight, forty-five, fifty-eight, fifty-four, fifty-five, sixty-three, and eighty-three, and general public comment.
doing illegal development so they can build apartment buildings just so they can harvest both. I mean, they don't they need to ask the owner of the land to pay them. Madam Chair, there are no other speakers in the queue to address the board. Tony, here's a real level. Hold nice minutes. Thank you. Comment. The call in line will remain open until 11.09. We'll take any other callers that come in by that time. Thank you for your patience. And we have had a couple more queue up now at this time. We'll go now to our next participant. It is Juliana Reyes. Please take the regular agenda items you're addressing today and with you will address some general public comments when you begin. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Please begin. Okay, I'd like to speak on agenda item 68. Uh, my name is Juliana Reyes, and I'm a college student studying sustainability. I'd like to urge you to vote in support of LA County's effort to pass an ordinance limiting single-use plastics. Plastic use is harming our environment, communities, and our wildlife, and I'm glad that LA City is taking action regarding this issue. Please vote yes on the reduction of waste from single-use articles and expanded polystyrene products ordinance. I am deeply concerned with the impact of plastic pollution on our local communities and environment. Use of plastic foodware has increased as much as 300% in the last two years and is one of the most common litter items found at LA County trash cleanups. Our focus should be on encouraging reusables or compostable single-use foodware. Thank you. Thank you. May we have the next speaker, please? Madam Chair, once again, there are no additional speakers in queue to address the board. Thank you again to ensure the 90 minutes. We will keep the line open until 11 or not. We have another participant queued up. Uh, we are going now to the line of Stephen Simon. Please take the regular agenda items you're addressing today. We'll be able to address some general public comment. Please continue. You can go ahead. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, good morning. I'm here to offer comments in support of agenda item 28 on the county's health care workforce. Um, my name is Stephen Simon. I'm from the Worker Education and Resource Center. We are the county's health agency labor management partnership and we're noted in the second directive in the motion today, um, particularly in reference to the PLACE program, preparing Los Angeles for county employment. Uh, this motion recalls the circumstances of our founding as an organization when the county and SEIU partnered to create work to address shortages in the nursing and allied health occupations. Um, one thing that we learned then and also more recently while implementing the PLACE program is that you really need to get all the right people in the room to focus on a problem. CEO, DHR, the hiring department, our partners at the new Department of Economic Opportunity. Um, and when you do that, there are solutions to these kind of hiring and recruitment challenges. So, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to working with all of our county partners on this motion. Um, and I'm optimistic that we can not only address hiring challenges in the short term, but also develop sort of a, a longer term solution, right, where we can grow our own, you know, incumbent workforce uh, to step into these critical roles where we have difficulty recruiting. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we have the next speaker. Please. Thank you. And Madam Chair, once again, there are no additional speakers in queue to address the board. Thank you very much. Our time for public speakers is ended, and I want to thank all that called in to speak. If you were unable to provide your comments, you may